President, please be seated. President, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now back in session. Reprise de l'audience. Before I give the floor to the international Avant deputy co-prosecutor, I would like to give an oral ruling concerning uh, the request of the defense Nunchia this morning. The chamber grants the Nunchia defense, defense request to reschedule the comments in response to the key document presentation hearings currently scheduled for Wednesday 29th of April to Thursday 30th of April. The Chamber confirms that the time and location for each party remain the same. No additional time will be granted, and the parties will have the opportunity to make any further replies during the closing statements. Now I give the floor to the international deputy co-prosecutor to resume the presentation on key documents you may not receive. Thank you, Mr. President. I'm now going to um, present a few documents that relate <coughs> to people who were arrested uh, for complaining about the lack of sufficient food, for stealing food to eat, or for complaining about difficult work conditions in Tramcock. Crankchan Notebook E3-4095, E3-4095, ERN Khmer 00271123, French 00721260 through 261, English 00747287, records uh, the presence of a 60 year old man named Yang Kai. He had eight children, born in Trapyang Tom Chung commune, and he had been arrested and sent to Krang Chan because he said he sympathized with the previous regime. And, I quote, he said the following, quote, for daily food, it's like we're slaves. We eat only porridge once a day, even without prahok and salt. We have no strength to work. End of quote. And the prison notebook, your honors, also records how this 60-year-old man was interrogated with hot methods to dig up his network, but he refused to confess. E3 2447. E3 2447 at Khmer. 00270733 through 34 English 00355474 French 00632162 This is a report from Lebo commune dated the 4th of September 1977 identifying a youth who complained about not having sufficient food this youth is reported as saying quote he had neither sufficient rice nor cassava to eat he complained that in the old society one could eat whenever you wanted but now it is impossible to eat anything. It also was reported that he said, quote, at present he does not want to be alive. It is better 
to die. And this report from Les Beaux Communes concludes, P.S., this person is a Yuan. And at the end of this report, there is a handwritten annotation from District Chief Kit, written two days later on the 6th of September, in which Kit instructs Crank Crank the John Prison Chief and on to conduct a thorough interrogation of the youth because, I quote, he is an organized string of the CIA, end of quote. E3, 2453. Next document is E3 slash 2453. Khmer ERN 00270780 through 781. English 00388583. French 00611773. This is a report from Nang Nang commune to the district party dated the 6th of October 1977 and it reports four women, two of whom were wives of soldiers, one whose husband was in Yun territory and the other whose husband had been smashed. The reason these four women were reported is because they said the following, quote, all four of them said, just bragging and announcing that socialism is plentiful, lacking in nothing. It is very plentiful, not a thing to eat can be seen. Eating gruel morning and evening. What kind of revolution is this thing of theirs? Nothing can be found to eat. It's not like it was in the old society. The old society was very happy. If you wanted to eat noodles or eat bread, there was plenty. It was not like this so-called revolution of theirs. They also said that the old society was happy. There were plays and movies and Chinese shows to go watch. It was not quiet like this revolution of theirs." End of quote. And your honors, uh, briefly, Krang Chan notebook E3 4083, E3 slash 4083 at Khmer 000 68036, English 00323976, French 00778877. Uh, this is a list of 29 prisoners, and number 28 on that list is a person who was arrested and sent to Krang Tachan because he complained about having to eat thin porridge. Your Honors, the next group of documents I would like to present concerns people who were arrested for trying to escape or flee their cooperative or work unit, people who tried to escape from Democratic Kampuchea and make it across the border to Thailand or Vietnam, and people who moved around too freely. Krang Tachan Prisoner List Notebook E3-4083 uh, at the same ERN pages I just mentioned, Khmer 000 68036, English 00323973 through 976, French 00778875. Through 7, 7, is the same list of 29 prisoners. The first 20 of those 29 prisoners are described as a network of 20 traders 
whose offense consisted of, I quote, planning to escape to Yuen, Vietnam, and Siem, Thailand. In Krang Tuchan notebook E3 slash 4095, E3 slash 4095, URN Khmer 00271095, French 00721215, through 216, English 00747245 through 246. These notes identify a prisoner, Nyet Pun, and state as follows. Quote, First mistake, he was too free, leaving his unit for his elder relative's house in Popol. Second mistake, he was too free visiting the house of his wife's relative. Third mistake, he walked too freely once again, contrary to the discipline, then fled as he dared not return to his unit. Next is E3 slash 2451, E3 slash 2451, at Khmer 00271005 through 06, English 00322172, French 00612447. This is a 6 October 1977 report from District 105 Chief Kit to the beloved party. Kit is requesting a decision on a female combatant who has been tempor temporarily detained for walking around without authorization and engaging in unspecified inappropriate behavior towards the commune committee. Kit's report received the following handwritten response from Sector 13 Secretary Proc. Quote, this female comrade must be an enemy. It is requested to interrogate her immediately in order to find out her network. It is requested to the police to conduct an intense interrogation. Your Honours, next E3 slash 4164, E3 slash 4164, a document I've mentioned earlier today, a Krang Tachan prisoner list titled Brief Biographies of Prisoners. Uh, this is the list that has a column in which the alleged offense of the prisoner is stated. And for the first prisoner on this list, this is the entire reason that is stated as to why he was imprisoned at Krang Tachan. Quote, this person was free-spirited and overjoyed failing to respect organizational discipline, end of quote. And a Krang Tachang execution list reflects that people were executed for minor offenses like this. E3 slash 4145, E3 4145, ERN's Khmer 000-68737. English 00762845 through 46. French 00761101 through 102. This is uh, a partial part of a list of 37 prisoners, including various information on them. 
an annotation on this list that is, the annotation is dated the 22nd of May 1977, states, a total of 37 people, both young and old, whose names contained in this list have been purged. Your Honours, number 35 on this execution list is a prisoner named, named Hum Chun, a 37-year-old from Triang District. This person had been reported to Ankar on the 5th of May 1977, about two weeks before his execution. And we see that report in document E3-2048, E3-2048, Khmer 00079095, English 00276566 through 567, French 00611664. And that report on the 5th of May 1977 stated that him Chun was a former merchant, the owner of a rice mill, who had left Pommel Popel commune to travel to see his grandmother without a travel letter and had been arrested by the Lebo subdistrict militia. And as I mentioned, prisoner list E3-4145 records that this person, Him Chun, was executed at Prang Tachan two weeks later on the 22nd of May 1977, two weeks after he was arrested for traveling without an authorization letter. Another Prang Tachan prisoner executed uh, on the 22nd of May 1977 recorded in this list. Uh, this is number 33 on that execution list, E3-4145, was a 29-year-old named Tach Vana. And your honors, Mr. Tach Vana was one of the Khmer Krom who were included in the list of Kampachea Krom people from Trapyang Tom Chung commune dated the 4th of May 1977 that my colleague presented to you earlier today, which is document E3-2281. Touch Vana was number 44 on that list of 73 Khmer Krom families from Trapping Tong Chum, where he's identified as a 29-year-old former motor trailer worker. A little more than two weeks after he appeared on this Khmer Krom, list of Khmer Krom, he was executed at Prang Tachan. The next subject, Sujet suivant. the Chamber has already uh, extensively seen La a déjà the 1978 letter from District Chairman Tassan conveying instructions to execute young children along with their mothers. Uh, so let me now, I will not go back to that, but I would like to now present just a couple of examples of additional documents reflecting the arrest and imprisonment uh, of both the very young and the very elderly in Tramgok District. D-157.36, D-157.36 contains two reports from Angroka Prison Chief Meng to Ankar, dated the 23rd and 24th of March 1977, regarding the arrest, interrogation, and confession of a 10-year-old boy named Ra. The alleged offense of this 10-year-old was being part of a group that tried to flee. And in response to the reports from Meng on the 28th of March 1977, 
then District Chief Kitt directed Krang Thachan Chief On to interrogate this spy in detail. In Krang Thachan notebook E3 slash 4095 at Khmer 00271129 French 00 721-268, English 00747-295. That notebook records the interrogation of a 13-year-old prisoner, Kok Leng, whose parents had died and who had been arrested because he fled in search of his siblings. Crank to Chen notebook E3 slash 2107 at Khmer 000 68053 English 00290211 French 00655730 records the detention and interrogation of a 13-year-old boy named Nyet Net, the son of a Law Nol colonel who was arrested for stealing coconuts and melons to eat. And in a Krang Tachan prisoner list in notebook E3 slash 4083 at Khmer 000, 68036, English 00323976, French 00778877. Prisoner number 29 on that list was a 73 year old man named Sung Rat, who was a former village chief from Sre Renong commune accused of stealing food. Let me quickly touch on a few documents relating to the treatment of Buddhists in Tramcock District. Document D157.69, D157.69, is a 31 August 1977 report from Office K105, which was the District Military Office, to Ankar, reporting the decision to arrest a man named Pum Un and to send him to Bang Men's place, Meng's place in Angroka. The reason for his arrest was that he said the following. Quote, Ankar says that it demolishes only the capitalists and soldiers. However, at the moment, there is no Buddhism, monks, schools, teachers, or markets. It might be better if Ankar allows Buddhism, monks, schools, and teachers to exist. End of quote. Notebook. E3 slash 4095 at Khmer 00271-131, French 00721-270 through 271, English 00747-297-370. Identifies two prisoners, Kim Nil and Sum Soret, who had been arrested and sent to Krang Tachan for joining the Khmer Sar Party for Religious Liberation. And in a reference from Meng Tri E's book, The Chain of Terror, E3 slash 2120, reference that is at uh, English year end 00416409 in footnote 281. Uh, at this spot of his book, Meng Tri Yi references an interview he did with a younger sister of Tamak, 
that younger sister of Tamok told him, quote, some Buddhists believe the destruction of a temple or Buddha image is a sin. Tamok's daughter, Kom, went insane because she ordered the destruction of a temple and one of its Buddha images, end of quote. I'm now going to change, turn to um, my final subject, which deals with authority procedures for arrests, interrogations, and executions. And in Henri Lucard's report on Tramcock District, section four of that report, this is document D, uh, document presented earlier by my colleague, D313 slash 1.2.16, year end references Khmer 00739070. English 00217718 and French 00743775 through 76. Henri Lucard wrote the following. Henri Lucard écrit. Quote. What is certain is that the theory of revenge killings against the new people is documented neither by the archival material nor by the numerous witnesses. Killings in democratic Kampuchea were centrally planned and entire, the entire Khmer Rouge bureaucracy being involved in the purification of Khmer society. As in similar regimes, the Nazi or the Stalinist varieties, bureaucrats and executioners had completely surrendered their free will to the party. They considered they were merely obeying orders and therefore could not be held responsible. Local cadres were essentially collecting information and exchanging it, making arrests interrogating, sending on captives. The accused was submitted to first an interrogation session or sessions locally, after which these reports were written, then he was sent to the upper echelon." End of quote. And your honors, uh, I would now like to play a couple of clips from a video that is in evidence called Deacon of Death. It is video E3 slash 3126R, E3 slash 3126R. This uh, film uh, portrays uh, the search uh, for a Khmer Rouge perpetrator named Karobi by a female new person, Sokchia, uh, who had lived in Tapem Commune Tramcock District during the Khmer Rouge regime and whose family members had been killed there. The perpetrator that she looks for in this film, Karobi, uh, was the security chief of Tapem Commune, has been identified by a number of uh, interviews in the case file, including uh, a deceased witness, Sok Sim, who was uh, a member of the Tapem Commune Committee that reference E3 slash 55, E3 slash 5519 at answer five. Um, Karobi has also been identified by uh, Kao Chandera, a trial witness, as one of the cadres who arrested him. And in the first clip that I would like to play, and for the AV booth, it is the clip that is number two. Uh, this clip is from uh, 48 minutes and 12 seconds through to 49 minutes and 12 seconds of the video. Uh, in this part of the film, uh, Sok Chia 
uh, comes to Wat Champa, a site in Tapem that we have heard testimony about in this trial, and describes what she observed there during the Khmer Rouge regime. And you also see Wat Champa. So if the video booth could please play uh, clip number two. President, yes, that you may proceed with the President, video clip uh, show on the screen. ตัวนี้ก็จับดามเธอสมีสลับเลยนะน้องๆนั้นคือเกดาวบ่าจุ้มไปนั่นให้ <coughs> And the second clip I will play, um, that is mark number three for the AV booth, is from 52 minutes and 13 seconds to 57 minutes and 12 seconds of the film. And what you will see here is a confrontation or meeting between uh, this survivor, Sokchia, and uh, the former Tapem security chief, Takarobi, that takes place inside Wat Champa. Uh, if the AV booth may now play, with your leave, uh, clip number three. <laughs> ដូចជាទឹកស្អុយតែប្រឡាក់ខ្ចាយប្រឡាក់ទេលនឹងយើងអាចយកទឹកស្អុយមកលៀងអោយមកជ្រះទឹកស្អុយមកបានទៅល
มาเมียนหุ่นซาลเขี้ยบไปเจ้าตายยังก่อนอ่ะอาจารย์ตัวเนี้ยเป็นองค์เธอสุขจีสุขจีเลือกล้างเหมือนมีเหมือนมีในท่าองค์เธอเป็นคนตายเกมีนจังนะแต่องค์กระทาวิอาจมีนหรือก็อ่อนอ่าแล้วอาจมีนฟินอ่ะเราใจยังยังปลุกยังมันมาแล้วยังไอเด็กเจ้าตาเนี่ยเขาเนี่ยมันเจ้าตาตาเนี่ยเพื่อเต้ตาสดาบอาจจะบ้านยังแม่นเจ้าตาตาเนี่ยเธอเตะโกนใจตาเนี่ยเธอเป็นอาจมีนหรือเปล่าเราเรื่องอาจจะเนี่ยมันดังเงินลองเอาเมันโน้ดังเงินเอาอยู่มวยคนเนี่ยเราคิดใจด้านนั่งไอ้เธอไอ้คลาปะปอลโยบักไอ้คลาย่อมแต่มาชุลมาตามเจมาตามยังมาเห็นปะปอลโยได้มาเห็นมาตรังตังปีบาทได้ตัวเที่ยวตาสู้ไปเชียร์จนได้เคยยิ่งยาวไอ้อ่าเธอเมียนบุญอ่ะมาเพย์น่ะอากูน่ะกล้าอ่ะกล้ากล้าอันนั้นจังทำลายเมียโดยสับไงได้เปลี่ยนได้อ่ะกล้าคืออ่ะเราตามยึดท่าคล้าคือกบาดเท้าของเมียนหันจมันนุ่มมือมันเทียงตรังไอ้ยมจะจามุกอ่อนยังมาสนาจมเท้าเปิดบอดเอาไว้ตายห้องเอาให้นั่งเหมือนเหมือนเติมเราตั้งจับที่มาพยายามตัวในไงนี้มันยังก่อสร้างอ้อตั้งปิดนมเครื่องมาตัวในไงนี้นั่งยิ้มยิ้มเรื่องนั้นใส่ตรังยังมองจังมันเกมันตามเธอตามมาตามจัดอะเกจองซองสักวิ้งกินทั้งมีกัดสมาโต้กัดกอตาแต่แหลกแม่นั่งสมาโต้หมอนี่คือก่อนนะจังมันจมลอยมุ้ยเอาโยงคนนี้ก็ฉลาดแต่ตัวสกอลนั่งกุมพกเอาไว้เดี๋ยวก็มาทั่วก็จำมันปนังเถิดจังอะไรนี่เคยนะมาสดับเลยกอดกอมันแมนเมนเนี่ยไอ้เรื่องจังทามันโปร่งตะตูเลยมาสดับหมดเลยก่อนจังสมัยจะทายอะไรนั่งเห็นสงบแต่เจี๊ยงสงบยังบ้านสงบแต่เจี๊ยงกอดบ้านซาลพี่กอดบ้านแถวตาในกระไรนั่งปัดจีบมีนเถิดจังแมนปัดจีบมีนสลับจังแมนยังทูได้ยังมันจองกามจองปีไอ้มวยกอดเต้อันนั้นได้กระติเพียวจานเอาเธอไอ้ขนมวัดรูปเตี๋ยกามวัดไว้ไปเฮียเจ้าแล้วเขาทากรุบเนี่ยมันกึ่งห้องเจ็ดนั่นทากรุบกลมมันอายุเว้ยกึ่งโดยขี้นี้I'll pre present just a few additional documents um, that show the systematic procedure by which people were arrested, interrogated, and executed in Tramcock. I wish to uh, quickly note a few documents that reference um, and demonstrate the knowledge and systematic use of torture in interrogating prisoners. Uh, I've already made reference to a couple of those today. Doc notebooks that make references to hot and cold methods of interrogation. An additional document uh, reflecting the use of violence during interrogations is Krangtachan notebook E34095 at Khmer 00271117. French 00721251. And English 00747279. In relation to a Khmer Krom prisoner named Tach the document records that this prisoner was beaten during the interrogation but did not confess. The following are documents that show that commune and district chiefs in Tramcock also had knowledge of these methods of interrogation and the authority to use them. Document E3-2447, E3-2447 at Khmer 00270731. Through 732, English 00355473, French 
is a 23rd May 1976 Le report from Aung Tassam Commune Chief Chaum to the District Chief regarding First Lieutenant King Hin, who is described in the report as a hooligan soldier with syphilis. The relevant reference from this report is near the very end where Commune Chief Chaum reports the following, quote, we had the militia bring him in for interrogation by using cold methods, and he refused to say anything at all. So I would like to request you to try to question him, because the wife of this person is in the transplanting unit and has instigated verbally that the district Ankar is lenient and the people can go anywhere they want. Document E3 slash 4126, E3 slash 4126, at Khmer 00270931932, English 00366714, French 00632501202. This is a report from Prankachan Chief On, dated the 26th of December 1977, describing the interrogation of a female prisoner. I quote, when our comrade in the army interrogated her, she kept crying and her face became black, which was her pretense. Therefore, according to my examination, only with hot interrogation would she confess. Within the army workplace at Angtasam, there are no confidential places to conduct interrogation at ease. Therefore, it is submitted to the party for information. Whatever the party decides, I look forward to executing the decision. End of quote. And report E3 slash 2445, E3 slash 2445, at English 00363653, Khmer 00270984, and French 00612444. This document states, in regards to the confession of Mung Sun, a prisoner who had been arrested on the 16th of September 1977, quote, we have conducted some cold and hot methods of interrogation against Mung Sun. He confessed that they had been appointed by A Hung since November 1976, end of quote. Your Honours, there are um, also documents um, showing how Krang Tachan confessions were used as the basis for further arrests of persons who were implicated in those confessions. Um, I will give you just one quick example, which is E3 slash 2012, E3 slash 2012 at Khmer 000. 82726 English 00276595 and French 00797685. This is a 11 July 1977 report from Prison Chief On on the confession of prisoner Sin Young. You will find in this uh, one handwritten annotation in the upper left margin which states to be smashed. But also near the bottom of this report, 
Uh, in the body of the report, rapport, there are the names of two other former law and officers who were identified by the prisoner in his confession, a captain and a first lieutenant. And next to the, those two names, there is another annotation that states to be arrested. And so the process continued. I've used a number of times the documents that show the sector, uh, sector annotations approving executions, um, so I will not cover those documents again. Let me end with uh, some examples of the reporting uh, to the district and reporting from the zone to Phnom Penh. You have seen, I believe already multiple times, the November 1977 monthly report from Krang to Chan, um, which is document E3-2109 at Khmer 00068014, English 00276555. French 00290272. This document reported uh, on the month of November 1977, indicating 75 new prisoners entered, 92 prisoners were purged, six died of illness, and one was removed to the sector, leaving a total of 85 prisoners at the end of the month. There is another example of a monthly report from Crank to Chan um, that I will mention to you, identify for you now. It is for the month of July 1977 in E3-4085, E3-4085 at Khmer. 00068017, English 00276558, and French 00850346. This document shows uh, similar information being sent to the party leaders for this month. And during the month of July, it is recorded that 18 new prisoners entered, 39 prisoners were purged, two died from illness, and there remained a total of 40 prisoners at the end of that month. And finally, Your Honors, um, Document E3-853, E3-853, this is a report from the southwest zone to Ankar, dated the 3rd of June, 1977. This report uh, follows the structure of other zone reports to the center that are in evidence before you, starting with the report on the defense or enemy situation, followed by economics, meaning rice production, building of dams and canals, and concluding with the report on the livelihood of the people. The report from the Southwest Zone covers all the sectors and districts in the zone, including the Cao sector, Sector 13, and Tramcock District. For example, the first section of this report from the Southwest Zone on the defense situation reported on arrests of en enemies and confessions obtained from their interrogations, stating, I quote, According to the confession of the enemies caught in Takao and Kampot province, the enemy set up a network of messengers laying in Kiravon district, Tukmias district, Angershe district, and Damre mountain. Enemies encouraged moving from one place to another such as moving from Sector 35 to Sector 13 or vice versa, or moving to mountains. So far, we have successfully arrested the enemies who launched activities mentioned above. The June 
1977 report from the southwest zone to the center reported on rice transplanting in Les Beaux commune, as well as plans for digging canals in Tramcock district. And in regards to the living standard and health of the people at the end of this report, the zone reported, quote, nowadays in Kampot, Kampanspu, and Takao province, the people have got cholera and some people died. Your honors, um, uh, let me end uh, at that point. Um, and uh, I will pass the floor now to the civil parties to continue uh, with their document presentation. That completes uh, the key documents from the co-prosecutors on Tramcock. Pour la poursuite de la présentation des documents clés pour le district de Tramcock. Le président, merci. La chambre pour les partis civils. Je vous remercie, Monsieur le Président, you, President. pour cette audience sur les, les documents clés. Document, nous avons choisi uh, d'être uh, les porte-voix des partis civils uh, qui n'avaient pas eu l'opportunité de déposer devant votre chambre. Of, uh, Et chamber. nous avons décidé de privilégier la lecture de cinq extraits de constitutions de partis civils, de partis civils qui ont été admises pour avoir souffert de crimes commis dans les coopératives de Tramcock. En sus de ces cinq extraits, nous avons également choisi de lire un extrait d'un procès verbal d'audition devant les co-juges d'instruction d'un membre de la commune de Tapem qui fait écho à l'audition et à la déposition de trois parties civiles que vous avez pu entendre lors de ce segment. Uh, during, uh, this segment. Nous allons partager and notre temps de parole entre mon confrère Hong Kim Soon et moi-même. Et je vais laisser la parole à mon confrère pour qu'il commence par la lecture d'extraits de trois constitutions de partis civils en Khmer. In Khmer. Et puis je reprendrai la parole I, uh, pour lire un certain nombre d'extraits en français. Donc je, je cède so la parole à mon confrère Hong Kim, Hong Kim Soon. Je vous remercie, Monsieur Thank le Président. Much, Mr. President. Madame le Président, le Président, le Président, Président, Merci, Monsieur le Président. We do not object uh, quite yet, but we nous seek guidance as to, um, I suppose, the nature of this document here. Uh, we have understood it uh, to be that nous we are here to present uh, documents, là, uh, to highlight documents, documents to the Chamber. However, uh, having, a had a, having had a look at the list of the civil parties, it seems that the majority, the vast majority of documents to be presented are excerpts from civil party applications. Um, I do not see that that, is, that that should be the purpose of a document hearing. The purpose is um, focusing on preferably contemporaneous documents uh, in order to highlight them in the vast uh, mass of documents that there are at the case file. Um, if you are saying that it is all right for civil parties to highlight excerpts from civil party applications, I would like to hear also from you if it is all right for the, for the defense to highlight certain portions of other uh, statements from witnesses. Um, in other words, uh, are we only here doing this document hearing to present uh, documents, or are we also allowed to refer to excerpts of civil party uh, applications and also um, written records of uh, investigation? May I please respond, Mr. President? Il me semble qu'il était euh, clair, en voyant la pratique euh, antérieure de la Chambre, qu'il nous était permis de présenter des constitutions de partis civils. Je rappelle à votre confrère que les constitutions de partis civils sont des documents, qu'il s'agit de documents 
écrits qui font partie du dossier et que nous avons dès lors pleine latitude pour présenter ces documents lors de cette audience. Nous n'avons à aucun moment reçu la moindre instruction de la Chambre qui pourrait nous laisser penser qu'il n'était désormais plus possible de présenter les documents que nous avons eu l'habitude de présenter lors du dernier procès. Il est absolument fondamental pour nous que nous puissions présenter ces documents. La Chambre a eu l'occasion de se prononcer sur leur valeur probante. Ils font partie du dossier, c'est indéniable. Je ne vois dès lors pas quel est le fondement de l'objection soulevée par notre confrère aujourd'hui. Je vous demande simplement, Monsieur le Président, de nous permettre de faire ce que nous avons fait de manière récurrente lors du dernier procès et de présenter les documents qui nous paraissent les plus pertinents pour ce segment. Relevant for this segment. President, President uh, the Chamber will allow the, the lead co lawyers la to proceed. Autorise la principale à poursuivre. That is to provide extracts uh, from the certain civil party applications de 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 which they civil. consider are deemed irrelevant si uh, to the portions of the key document presentation proceedings. Do you have the floor? So, Mr. Chair, Good afternoon, Mr. President, to the honors, everyone in and, and around uh, the courtroom. I am Hong Kong Soon, a civil party lawyer, and I'd like to uh, read in my extracts of a civil party applications. De demande de constitution de parti civil. Which are a part of the current case file. Ces documents ont été versés au dossier. First, I'd like to uh, provide you extracts from a civil party application of uh, Cheng Paul, which is document E3-6143. And the extract that I read in uh, Khmer is on EN 0055 to 96-98. And in English, 0107-6692-93. And following is the extract. My name is Ms. Chung Paul, currently living in Kmal Tumnuk village, Sangkat Bang Tumpun, Khan Min Che Phnom Penh. Before 1975, my husband was a lunar soldier working in the telecommunication unit that is installing a phone line. I was a housewife taking care of our daughter and son. On 17 April 1975, I and my family, along with other people, were forced out of the city by the black clad Khmerus, who were carrying AK 47 and shooting at rampage while ordering us to leave the city by claiming that they needed to sweep clean the city for one or two days before they could let us return. I and my family left for my husband's birthplace in Tramcourt district, Trapeng, Renib Village. The Kai province. Two nights after we arrived there, we were not given any bed to do. They gave us three cans of rice as food ration for our family. After that, they assigned me to collect more leaves to feed the cocoon worms and to grow vegetables in the rice field. Later on, they put me in through the group of 15 persons and we were assigned to complete implanting and harvesting rice on a three-hectare field each day. If we could not complete this assignment, they would have a new measure for us. Other than that, they sent us to dig a canal. The canal was three meters wide and some kilometers long. Even the ropes were harsh. I was still forced to ensure that because I was afraid that they would kill my husband and children if I could not handle them. When they spotted me sitting alone during break time, the village chief, Tang Wong, and Ngum rudely said to me, you sit alone away from other people like this because you are not happy with the revolution. I answered to them, I do not sit with other people. 
pour le faire, même si je n'ai pas content de la révolution, j'ai répondu, je n'ai pas envie de m'asseoir ici en attendant, je ne veux rien dire qui ne défoncera la ligne révolutionnaire, mais pour les autres, je suis très contente de la révolution. En mai 1977, ils sont venus m'arrêter et m'ont attaché pendant la pause de déjeuner. Trois hommes sont arrivés, notamment Tang Ong, le chef du village, le chef du village, le chef de l'unité et le chef de l'unité des jeunes. They tied up my arms and bound them behind my back in the parrot wing style without telling me what my offense was. After they walked me for over one kilometer away from the work site, we arrived at a site on a high ground where there were trees and a B-52 crater. They kicked me and I fell to the ground. Then they started to interrogate me. They asked me questions like, first, are you a spy or not? Second, do you plot to destroy the revolution? And third, do you plot to attack on Gaia? During the interrogation, they whipped me with a bamboo stick. I told them that I was not a spy. They said that I was a mistress of a soldier and that I was a stubborn person. They beat me more and told me to confess my crimes. But I did not have anything to tell them. I did not know what I had done wrong. They tried to force me to make a confession by telling me that if I confessed my crimes, they would release me. However, I still refused. With regard to point number two, I asked them how I could destroy the revolution. I did not know anything about that. They claimed that when Anka gave me a skirt, I did not wear it. But I used the material to make du tissu a bolster and a pillow instead. Pour, uh, me I told them that they could go to check about this claim further at my place. I had not si done anything vrai, like what they claimed. Nim then Nim jumped on me, punching dessus, and kicking me on my chest. I fell back down to the ground. Blood was coming out ma from my mouth. Saigné. My tongue was shrinking down to my throat. With regard to point number three, I asked them how I could attack on Gang when I did not even know, did not have anything with me. They said that I told the people that Anka did not give palm juice to people to drink, but Anka gave it to its own wife and children only. I told them that no one living under the revolution dared say things like this. They said that I was bullheaded because I was a mistress of a soldier. During the time they were torturing me, there was an elderly man named Wung who was collecting rattan in the area nearby for making baskets saw this event. When they spotted that elderly man, they arrested him and beat him to death because they accused him of being a spy. At that time, there was a child who was in his teens, in his teens rather, coming on a bicycle to meet them. Shortly after that, they said to me, you're lucky that Anka had decided to release you. Anka just wants to re-educate and release you because we cannot find force to repress you. But they warned me. 
Quand tu rentreras chez toi, si tu dis ce qui s'est passé à ton mari et à tes enfants, ou à d'autres personnes, afin de les démoraliser, ils te tueront immédiatement. Après ça, ils m'ont envoyé travailler au sein de l'unité de collecte, which consisted of widows whose husbands had been killed. Then they assigned me to collect human excrement and termite heal to make them into fertilizer. After mixing and converting them into fertilizer, I dried them up and stored them in storage. Even the smell from these things were so bad, I bit my lips and strove to, en to enjoy it. Later on, they ordered me to go to dig a canal at a place far away from the village where I stayed until the time the Vietnamese and the front troops came to liberate us. At that time, I was sick and hearing that uh, they were preparing the Khmer noodle mixed with poison for the 17 April people to eat. However, the Vietnamese troops arrived to save us on time before I and other people could eat the noodle. When the Vietnamese troops arrived, they fled to the mountain area and they forced the people to go along. I was discussing with my husband that if we were to follow them, we would die because we did not have any food with us. And As for my father, people from Kondang district told me that the Khmer Rouge killed him. Another person living in Preto, who was detained together with my husband, with my father, told me that my father died a miserable death. And he, his hands were tied behind his back, and he was pushed into the river and drowned twice, but he uh, didn't die. Then they uh, killed him in another location, that is a temple, which was turned into a prison, and my father was detained there. Bed boxed annoyed him at night time, and when he tried to get rid of the bed bags, they accused him of trying to escape. And then they used a, uh, an axe, axle of an ox cart uh, to beat him up, and next day he was killed. And in the end, the applicant uh, requested the court to find justice for him. The Next document is the civil party applications of Kai Phon, document E3-6457. The Khmer Ian is 0054111062. The English extract is 0106. で、アプリケーションで、アプリケーションで、アプリケーションで、アプリケーションで、アプリケーションで、アプリケーションで、アプリケーションで、アプリケーションで、アプリケーションで、アプリケーションで、アプリケーションで、アプリケーションで、アプ
Whose extract is read as follows. On 17 April 1975, the Khmer Rouge evacuated my family and me to live in Tramco village, Tramco commune, Tramco district, Takao province. And when we arrived there, my family and I became the new people. Then the old people ordered me to carry cow dung, build dice, dig canals, farm rice, uproot and transplant rice seedlings. Then the Khmer Rouge gave me and the new people rice porridge to eat with morning glory. In 1976, the Khmer Rouge didn't evacuate my family and the people from there to any other places again. They ordered us to live at the same place in Tramco village, Tramco commune, Tramco district, Takai province. As for food, we still had rice porridge with morning glory. And some killings took place there. During the time my husband was taken to be killed by the Khmer Rouge, who used an excuse that they were bringing him to farm rice. Since then, I have not heard anything from him. Depuis. My husband was uh, Kut Jorn. Mon mari s'appelait Kut Jorn. He was 47 Il years old ans. and he was a farmer. Il était agriculteur. He was taken and killed. Exécuté. My first daughter, Kut He, Ma première fille, Kut He, who stays at the children unit died from being seriously tortured. De grave torture. She could not bear the pain Elle pas in la addition to having no medicine for cela, treatment. Pour être the killing became intensified as Les for the uh, food, we were given only porridge without morning nourriture, glory. Que de la nous plus de In 1977, 1977, they evacuated me and other villagers to Roli village, Tao commune, Kiribong district, Takao province. province and allow me uh, to uh, pause here. And Permettez-moi de marquer une pause ici. President interrupts. President Thank you, uh, lawyer for remercie. civil parties. The time is convenient for a, a short break. We take a break now and pause. return at uh, 3 o'clock. The court is now in recess.